Today we're here with John Boggio of Ascar Jigs. And John's going to show us how to properly tie probably the best jigs you could buy right now on the market. His jigs are absolutely amazing. So John, you can take us through it. Okay. Right now. We've just taken this jig out of one of the molds, let it cool off a little bit, and what I do is I clean up the eyes, and I file down all the unnecessary lead that's on it, and I also take off the eyes because I put my own special 3D on them, and we just file them down until it's flat on both sides. Now what we do then is we take some of the special clear that I have and put a little bit on around the neck and we take the thread and wrap it around several times make sure it's on there so that's basically a glue that you just put on there yes okay okay it's not the hardest nails it's something else I just haven't taken the the, uh, the paper off of it okay get this like that and we take some white deer hair and what we do is we take clumps of it I'm using a 3 year old jig head so we try to keep the hair all the way back to go past the hook and we wrap it around and what I do is I flare it out a little bit Try like a mold and make it look good. So that's yeah. basically all by hand you're doing to give it that all flare. All by hand. It's not just throwing the hair on and wrapping no. it and be done with it. No. So there's a little technique to it. Yeah. And we just keep going around and around, building it up. It's not, <laughs> a lot of times these things, they're not very pretty looking as you're building them. And sometimes they're not even that pretty after you build them. It's after you get it all together and and you dip them in the clear that I I put them in. First what I do is I paint them with a primer coat in white and then after it dries in 15 minutes then I put another coat on and then that's when I begin to tie. So that's basically a rough right. painted mold right yeah. there. Yeah. And now you're getting the hair on right. and everything. And just put in the hair and you make it look pretty, take off all the, the excess. You know. Look at it, it's actually flaring out pretty yeah. nice. Yeah. There are a lot of different ones that don't flare out because they try to be more streamlined but this one has the big collar on it I'm trying to make it look nice and heavy this, this one works very well a lot of different things uh, customers that come in here and buy them fishing around the rocks at demo and they buy them in a five ounce this is a three ounce right here okay and that would be considered a smiley sandwich that's think they what call? it is yeah. And then I I put on the, the lips. You, know, you don't have to get crazy with the paint with the lips. I use a, a big magic marker like this. And that's what I put the lips on with two coats. I try to put a lot of coats of everything on. So this way it <laughs> lasts longer. Just a plain you know? Sharpie marker. Yeah. That's nice. So I used to do it by hand with the regular paint. And it didn't always seem to come out well. And red for some reason just it didn't stay on. You know, nice. So, and just move the hair around, try to keep it and cover up some of those gaps. Flip it around a little bit, tighten it up. So you're actually putting quite a bit of uh, bucktail oh, on there. Yeah. Oh yeah. How many jigs you think you can get with one bucktail? It depends on the size that I use. Sometimes okay. if I use a three-quarter ounce, I can get anywhere from almost up to nine, oh, wow. ten, maybe. And as this, the size gets bigger, and when you use these, it's the collar is so much bigger compared to, say, like the Spro ones that I was building earlier today. Gotcha. Um, it's a very small collar. It's a, just a small collar. Uh, I have one here that's in a, in a, a four row and you can see the difference of the size of the collar compared to this one. Right, it's huge. Much small. Right, so it doesn't take as much here but you can still make it flare out and look good. And a lot of guys don't want, some of them don't want to flare, they want it more streamlined. Right, well the flare is probably going to sink right. slower in the current. Well, Bucktail does 
go down a little bit slower. That's why a lot of guys are asking me now to build everything in nylon. It's, the nylon. it's a lot faster, like a flare, like a flare, flare hook, hook a flare hook jig that they use down in Florida for the schnook for the bridges. Right. And it, it's not hollow and it sinks faster. But some of those guys also that fish for the schnook down there want to use bucktail also. It just depends what you like. But everything has a purpose. So Let's see now what we do is when we take the thread, now we start building it up. Okay. And I try to hold it back, you know, so this way there's no hair that overlap. Right. And then I just go round and round and round. And right now I'm using a lighter thread than I normally use. I usually use Big Fly. This is the way I have at the moment. Right? It takes going. quite a bit of thread to actually oh, yeah, get that on there. But I'm trying to get it all nice and even. I can't. I, I, growing up and seeing jigs being made as a kid, there, there were strings hanging out all over the place, uh -huh. and you know, just I try to do make it look as nice as possible. It's not to, you know, the sell fishermen or the fish are going to notice that it's a nice job. It's it's that the hair is on there and it's right. going to stay on there and you're going to be able to use it. Well, a lot of guys, you know, you know, pull the hair, you know, see, you know, and it's not coming out. So that's the quality you know, of the jig, right. which makes your jigs the best. All right. Thank you. <laughs> so let me try to build it up in the back a little bit more. Try to make it look nice. That's my personal preference yes. to make it look nice. And then I take some flash. It's definitely coming together there. It's starting to look like a lure now. And what I do is I'll take some crystal flash. I don't know, anywhere from 10 to 12 pieces. So I don't even count them anymore. I just, this is, that looks beautiful. And I do them on there. And one, two, three wraps. And then I try to. Hey, okay, I can see that flash right now coming yeah. through the screen. And then some people call me up and they want other stuff in there. Some want other things that I have in the shop and stuff. People come in here and they just, they look around and, you know, and they just pick out stuff that I have and they want to see what it looks like and we try to compare it and, and lay it down on some of the other jigs that I have with nothing, no flash or anything on them. I just try to cover that up. Sorry for the squeaking on. Well, that That's happens a lot. A lot. Um, the line breaks? The line breaks. Yeah, it's thread, and I try to do it as tight as I possibly can. So in a situation like that, just knot it and keep going? That's all I do. Because now, I put two coats of clear. Actually, I have three coats of clear on it now. Right. So nothing's going to break it off. That's a little, you know, I just go right back over it again, you know, I try to hold this down a little bit and then I try to just go over it again. And lock it in place. Yeah. And Basically the same concept like when you're wrapping a fishing rod. Yeah. Just get right over and it and I, hold itself. Yeah. And then just go over and just try to get it on there and, and then snip off the excess and then just keep going back to what I was doing. This was a quick fix, no problem. Yeah. And then just keep going around, try to cover up. You know, the flash that's sneaking out through the threads. And I think it's freaking noisy. Yeah. And we'll make this a quickie. This will be mine. Usually when I do something like this, they become mine and they work just as well. Yeah. Do that. I'm going to tie that up like that. And then what I do then is I coat it up with this. This is the first coat. Make sure and that's that blue again. Yeah, and I make sure. It's actually the clear paint itself. And when I put this on, it's, it looks like the coating that would be on a rod or would be on a cue stick. I got you. you know? And I just pour it on. And this only takes about 15 minutes to dry. And then what I can do is then I put it in the big container. And what I do with the magic marker now is I take it off. I usually do this after I give it to coach because this is a permanent marker. Right. I just run it across like this, freehand. So it's a little lipstick. That's all it is. Sometimes it looks like when your crazy grandmother puts on the lipstick, it's all over the place, like Bozo. I like that. It's my favorite. And I try not to hook myself. Don't we? You've done that already. Yes, I have. <laughs> and if I did it again, Sammy wouldn't be too happy. You always can have a job with Revlon now too. Yes, I could. <laughs> so, 
And I just put it on, and I'll give two coats of this too. After it's done, it's permanent, it's not going to go anywhere. And then after I do that, oh, blood. And then we put the eyeballs on. And I use a 3D eye, made in Wisconsin. And sometimes I use several different sizes. Sometimes I have customers say, oh, Johnny, I love the eyes. Do you think you can make them bigger? And I've gone over with several people about do you catch more fish with eyes, or you don't catch more fish with eyes. I guess that's a standing argument, usually on this 301 I use the size I and then after I'll after 15 minutes and I'll dip that so in the right clear there, huh? and this is what it comes out to look like. This one just needs I give it one more coat of red, you know, and that's ready to go. And I clean out the uh, I clean out the eye socket and so that one's not even complete yet and it still looks like it's ready to catch fish. Right. So, I mean, you could catch fish with that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. So, and we make all different size heads. We make all different, different things, various sizes. Like this arrowhead, a lot of people come in here and buy this for fluke fishing. And I make this with the swing hook. That's why you see the, so the screw that, on the back now, here. Once that's done, now you put epoxy on that, right? You're going to cover the head with epoxy. This, oh, actually, the, the, the stuff that I dip it in, if you want to reach over and grab that can that's behind you, I can show you what okay, we do. So that's what we do with the jig after this, the first coat is dry. I take it. Now, I've already painted the lips, and a lot of times the lips, the, the red will go into the can here, because that's why I always try to do that last so it doesn't drip. This stuff is pretty high uh, octane. And I drip it in there, so as you can see now, the whole head and the threads are all coated. Gotcha. Okay, that's the first coated. Okay, now we'll let this sit up here. We'll move that back a little bit. And just let that drip, it doesn't take that long. And then what we do after that, you can see how it tries to close up the, uh, the, the gap right, and the yeah. threads. Like this one here. And that's why you, know, you get almost like that, that uh, rod look, mm -hmm. you know. And this hair is not coming out. I mean, I'm going to pull it on and I don't want to get hooked again. Um, it's locked in there pretty in, good. It's not coming out. And you know, bass is going to pull out. A blue fish will destroy. A blue sure, fish will destroy it. anything. But a bass is not pulling that hair out. Okay, my name's Sean.